All right, you guys. So I had a really interesting question posed to me recently. Um, well, not really recently. It's just that I recently got around to that question. Um, so sorry for that, but I decided to answer it in a video for you because it's actually a very interesting question. And it was essentially like, can you be um, a physician assistant and this other career at the same time that deals with anesthesia? And so um, I wanted to answer that question for you in today's video. Uh, so let's get into the video right now. What's up you guys, Zanana, welcome back to my channel. So as my title says, um, you know, I'm talking about physician assistants in anesthesia, but um, not physician assistant in the, in the in terms of the PA like me that you would think. It's really the physician assistant comparable. Now, typically we would think that a PA, the physician assistant in anesthesia is the CRNA, uh, the Certified Regis Registered Nurse Anesthetist. However, I was privy to another career that is more comparable to the physician assistant role and model. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys about that uh, and just kind of give you a little bit of background on, in what I've learned thus far on my research. So the question was posed to me uh, by one of my subscribers asking um, if it was possible to be a PA as well as a certified anesthesiology assistant. Now, I had never heard of a certified anesthesiology assistant, and really, to my knowledge, like to my understanding, there wasn't a route for like PAs in anesthesia. That was kind of like really held um, and kind of like a chokehold by the 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 NP model, right? Being a CRNA, and so I was very surprised to hear that there was an option, an APP option for people that wanted a more medical, like through the physician trained route um, in, in terms of their grad school to be in anesthesia. And so um, the subscriber wanted to know if she could be able to do both because her advisor was saying that it was not a possibility. And at first and foremost, I just wanna say like, that's absolutely ridiculous. If you wanna get two master's degree um, and be in two different careers, you can absolutely do so as long as you are following the guidelines and the scope of practice of each one in the area that you're working in. Uh, that's why there are people in like cardiothoracic surgery or various different types of surgery. I know like a general surgeon, no, actually I know an intensivist that does plastic surgery. So, you know, like just saying, like there are some nuances to that. And if you do want to go to the four years of schooling that it will typically take, um, you know, while getting your master's degree in these various at minimum in these various different uh, career choices, then by all means, go ahead and do it. And don't let anybody stop you from that, okay? So that's like me on my soapbox to these advisors that are giving wrong advice, okay? Um, it's a possibility. It's just gonna be a little bit harder, a little bit more difficult, a little bit more time consuming, but you can absolutely do it. So let's get back to what I wanted to talk to you guys about, the CAA. So um, I had never heard of it and I wanted to like see what this is all about and um, come to find out, like I said, it is very much um, in tandem, uh, very much in sync with what a PA does on a regular basis. The only thing is that if you become a CAA, like that's who you are, right? And so uh, it's similar in the, you know, CRNA route, like if you're a CRNA, like you're a CRNA, you can't like go in moonlight uh, in family practice really and truly, right? You know, you stay in anesthesia. Um, and so it's the same thing unless you get certified or um, licensed in something else which is what that student was thinking about doing. So um, there are some little nuances that I wanted to talk to you guys about with this career, because first and foremost, it is actually very a very lucrative career, but there are some things that you have to be mindful of and be aware of before you decide that you wanna be a certified anesthesiology assistant. So the first thing that I think you should absolutely keep in mind is that this is a very kind of like new, still up and coming uh, career path. So right now there are only 22 states slash territories that you can work, um, that allows you to work as a CAA, okay? And so I will list those on the screen right here for you. Um, but really and truly, 
you know, if you live in any of these states, then great, good for you. You're able to do that. You're able to work as um, a CAA. However, if you do not live in any of these states, then it looks a little bit less appealing to you because you're gonna get into, um, and also if you don't wanna live in any of these states, um, then you're gonna want to get into a career that gives you a little bit more lateral mobility or um, be able to like, work across the board, like being a PA or a certified registered nurse anesthetist, okay? So those are things just to keep in mind. Um, but I wanted to like list those states for you. Um, and the territory is Guam. So, you know, you can work as a CAA in Guam. While you're only allowed to work in 22 states uh, and territories, there is something that's pretty unique because there are only four of those 22 states where you actually need a delegation agreement with an anesthesiologist, where um, PAs need delegation agreements, kind of like across the board for the most part, right? And so, um, it's it's rather interesting that you're able to kind of work under your own licensure and certification as a CAA like it's you like it's you it's yours like you don't need to wait for anybody to like sign off on your notes or anything like that which is interesting so a little bit more autonomy in that sense but again you're still working in collaboration and in tandem with the anesthesiologist especially in the hospital setting let me talk to you specifically about what CAAs are right so so um, a CAA is a certified anesthesiology assistant that is highly skilled and specialized in terms of uh, being under the directions and licensure of an anesthesiologist within the anesthesia care team. So you're going to be giving medications, um, you're gonna be starting inductions, you're gonna be doing um, intubations, like that kind of stuff, you, basically like anything that you can think of like that the anesthesiologist or the CRNA does, like that is similar to what you're gonna be doing. Uh, you're gonna be going to rapid responses and you know, situations where people are coding and you know, assisting with like placing a line and you know, ultimately like administering like the propofol or the fentanyl or whatever, like rock or sucks or all of these different like in you know, a sedating drugs, like you're gonna be doing that. And so that is essentially what a CAA does. Um, specifically, there are only 16 programs currently in the United States. Um, and so I will list those there for you as well. So check those out. Um, the 16 programs are really kind of all centered around the same state. So definitely like you, if you live in like Florida, Georgia, Colorado, Ohio, um, there are a little bit more options for you for schools that offer certified anesthesiologist assistant programs. Um, I did see some in Wisconsin and Indiana as well as Missouri. And then Case Western actually has um, several different like schools in different states. So you apply to like Case Western's uh, CAA program as a whole, but you can, you know, you can choose which program you specifically want to go to, like which state. Um, so that is something that you, you can do or keep in mind. So nuances, only 22 states you're a and, and a territory that you're able to practice in, only 16 programs available, okay? I didn't look to see, um, like go into the weeds of like, all right, well, how much does each program admit? Um, how many students come through their program? Uh, how many different starts do these have? If you're interested in that, these are things that you're gonna have to get into. Um, and how you can find that information out is by going to their, their version of CASPA. So, you know, CASPA is our centralized application service for physician assistants. However, they have a CASPA which is their centralized application services for anesthesiology assistance. So if you are interested in becoming a certified anesthesiology assistant, you have to go check them out on CASA, okay? Um, and so I'll leave a link for that like right here for you. So you guys can go check that out. Um, just copy and paste it into your browser. All right, so with that being said, like what are some of like the prerequisite requirements? And essentially it's exactly the same as, you know, as being becoming a PA, a little bit more focused on your chemistries. And I know, I'm sorry if you're not in just chemistry, but your chemistries and your maths. Um, but typically this is what they, they require, a biochemistry, 
um, biology, uh, anatomy and physiology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, a calculus, um, sub, uh, statistics, and then English. And so uh, when you're trying to get into PA school, those are kind of typically the things that you're already looking at uh, taking or you've taken because you were a science major. And so if you are interested um, in kind of making the switch or you've always wanted to be an anesthesiologist or been, be an anesthesia, um, but you don't want to go through all of the schooling, uh, and you want to be able to have like a different kind of lifestyle, then this is an option for you, okay? Uh, those are the prerequisites generally that I've seen across the board. And so if there are any specific questions um, concerning prerequisites per school, what you can do again is go to the link that I left for CASA, um, click on each program and see what their prerequisites are. The GPA requirement can vary. I saw some that was like 2.75. I saw some that you have to like maintain an overall like GPA of 3.5. Um, so again, school specific, you just have to check in on that. What also is school specific that I saw was whether or not you need to take the GRE or the MCAT, okay? Um, and so it is a graduate program. It's a master's degree, just like the PA degree. So uh, typically the schools are requiring the GRE. Uh, however, there are some options where you can take the MCAT and what I did also see was with the prerequisite requirements, you guys, they still also like in PA school have a, a kind of cap on when they should have been taken, either three years, five years, seven years, um, depending on which prerequisite they're asking you for. But for there was one program that I saw where if you didn't want to like retake your prerequisite requirements, although the school doesn't require a GRE or an MCAT, you can take the GRE or MCAT so that you don't have to retake your prerequisite requirements, um, which is pretty cool and pretty important because, you know, you might just take one test, study really hard, take the one test, hopefully do really well on that, and then you don't have to retake, you know, five to seven courses um, pushing back your time to to actually apply. So um, just keep that in mind. I did wanna read this little thing for you guys because I thought that it was pretty amazing. Okay, so um, this is from Case Western's CAA program. It says, our graduate program immerses students in didactic instruction, simulation, and hands-on clinical training over the course of two years. So very similar to what you do in PA school, okay, you guys? This rigorous curriculum enables students to work higher acuity cases, test their skills in emergency situations, and grow increasingly confident in the operating room, which is why nearly 100% of CR, CWRU, which is Case Western's university's program, MSA graduates have job offers before graduation with starting salaries averaging above $160,000 a year. Guys, you're coming out of school. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. I'm like breathless. And my throat is itching on that one. You're coming out of school with an average salary above 160,000. So for those of you who are like always about like, oh, well, what is the salary? Like this is a great starting off salary. But again, you have to keep in mind that you're only able to work in a few states, 22 states, okay? So um, just some things to kind of mull over. Um, I hope this was like interesting to you because it's interesting to me. I was like, man, you know, I don't know, maybe in the future I might wanna be like a certified anesthesiology assistant and see, check my hand at that. Like I was talking to my husband about that. He's like, oh no, are we gonna have to move to Colorado? But he's from Colorado, so it made, it was fine. But um, it's just something that you guys can think about, different routes that you guys can go, because again, like I said, this is an option for you. And that's what it's all about. It's all about opening yourselves up to the various different options that you have as a pre-healthcare student, okay? There's so much for you to get into outside of just being your typical, you know, doctor, nurse, PA, um, NP thing, right? You know, there is so much outside of that. 
Uh, so definitely open your horizons. Uh, if there are things that you're interested in, um, do your research and make sure that you make the best decision for your life and the lifestyle that you want to afford. Okay. All right. Hopefully this was interesting. If you have any other questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Follow me on Instagram and on the PA. I'm back guys. I'm, I'm back posting on Instagram. <laughs> So follow me on Instagram at on the PA and on Instagram at Get That C University, where we help you not only get into but through PA school. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 